Hello and welcome to Dishing Delights. My name is Jenica and today I am going to share with you the dinners I made throughout the week. Let's get to it. Now for our first dinner, I decided that I wanted to make some meatballs, some instant pot rice, and some green beans and mushrooms. So to start that off, I took an egg and I added that into my bowl. Now I do not have a specific recipe I'm just going off of, I'm just adding in whatever I have on hand. I'm also going to add in some crushed croutons. These are just leftover croutons that were at the bottom of the jar. Adding in a little bit more breadcrumbs just to give it the consistency that I want. To this I'm also adding in some jalapeno ketchup and some Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. This will add a whole lot of flavor. I'm also going to add in some Worcestershire sauce. I add Worcestershire sauce to almost all of my red meat recipe. Now to this, Add in whatever seasonings you would like. I added in some garlic powder, some onion powder, and just some seasoning salt. Now I'm just going to mix this up by hand. It's the easiest way to make meatballs. Now try not to over mix your meatballs, that way they don't turn out really tough. And then just roll them up by hand, try to keep them in as uniform balls as you can. That way they all cook evenly. And I'm just going to add this to a pie plate. I have the oven preheated to 350 degrees. Now once I formed all of those balls, I'm going to make a little sauce to top it. I'm going to take some Sweet Baby Ray's Honey Barbecue and a little bit of that jalapeno ketchup and I'm just going to make a glaze for these meatballs. Now I'm just going to bake those until they are completely cooked through. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to make some instant pot rice. Now it's just one part rice, one part water, and then I just use the rice setting every single time. And it turns out perfectly. So for my vegetable side, I'm going to take some green beans and some mushrooms and I'm just going to add them to a pot. I'm just going to heat these through and I'm going to use the Chicago steak seasoning that I always use for my vegetables and I'm just going to add a little bit of that to it just for some flavor. Now those will be done in less than two minutes. That's what I love about canned vegetables is you just heat them up and it's a super simple side. Now that our meatballs are done, we are going to make up our plates. These turned out so delicious. Take a shot every time I say so delicious in my videos. <laughs> Now 
Now I just kept this super simple. I just served my meatballs on top of my rice. Now I'm not a saucy gal, so I didn't add any sauce to mine, but my husband put a little barbecue sauce all over his meatballs and rice. Now what I liked about this meal is I knew that I was going to be home alone because my husband went on a fishing trip. So I decided to take a serving of this. I added it to a little casserole dish. That way I could just pop this in the oven on a night that it was just me eating. And that worked out really well. Now we don't use a microwave for leftovers. We don't have a microwave at all. I I'm not a fan of microwaves. I don't know what about it. I'm just not a fan of them. They don't cook food evenly anyways. So anyways, I'll get off my little soapbox. But I just put my leftovers in these little casserole dishes. And then if I don't eat them within two days, I'll just toss this right into a freezer for a later date. I did end up eating this, but that's usually my thinking process when I am reusing leftovers like this. We are now going to turn some leftovers and do something delicious. All right, it is morning and I have some leftover chicken and bean soup. I'm going to warm this up and then I'm going to add pasta to it. This has been heating up for about an hour and a half. What I'm going to do to this is add a can of corn. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of this five pepper salsa that I have. And some macaroni noodles. About three quarters of a cup. I'm going to let this heat up and then I'll serve it with some sour cream. We thoroughly enjoyed this meal. In fact, my husband ended up having three bowls of it throughout the night. So this was definitely a win. I also want to let you guys know that this was made with two kinds of beans that I canned myself. And there's something phenomenal about home canned beans. There's just something about the taste that is amazing. Now I ended up using those meatballs for a lunch. Now I ended up using that leftover meatball meal for lunch. So while my husband was away, I needed to use up my leftovers. I used up that ham and potato soup one day and that was absolutely phenomenal. And then the night he came back, it was super late. So we ended up making some ravioli. How simple can you get? All right, I have my cornmeal and then I also filled up a jar with sugar because I ran out of my last one. I set those aside. I've got a lot of noises going on in the background. All right, what I am going to be doing is doubling this recipe. 
All right, like I said, I'm doubling this recipe. We are going to make four, we are going to make enough dough for four pizzas instead of two. I'm going to need 876 grams of flour. That's seven cups. Oh my goodness, I forgot to turn the scale on. <laughs> I just measured out 876 grams of flour on the kitchen scale. The kitchen scale is the best way to measure your flour for any of your baking needs because it's accurate every single time. And honestly, I find it much easier than getting out a scoop and scooping out each cup by hand. So I'm going to set this aside. I have my yeast. I have my sugar. I don't have olive oil yet, but I have some oil some salt and of course my flour so we are going to get out my KitchenAid this is two and two thirds. That water was at 110 degrees. I also have 14 grams of instant yeast. I am adding in two tablespoons of sugar. Now I'm just going to let this sit for five minutes. I am now adding four tablespoons of oil. One and a half teaspoons of salt. And now I'm going to add in all of that flour. Now add the dough hook attachment and we are going to mix it for two minutes. Now as I have made pizza dough a little bit more often lately, I have found myself understanding the texture that the dough needs to be. And after you make pizza dough a few times, you'll understand as well. If it's really sticky, just keep adding a little bit more flour and eventually the texture will be just perfect. And that's what I'm doing here. All right, it's been two minutes, so we're gonna check it out. It's definitely still a little sticky. Just gonna make sure there's no pockets of flour at the bottom. I definitely need to add in a little bit more flour. All right, I just added in about a quarter cup of flour. Now I'm going to bring this over to a greased bowl. Now I am just going to cover this and set this in front of the heater. Now I have been making pizza every single Friday lately, so I decided it was time that I make four weeks worth of dough balls, and then I'm just going to add them into my freezer. I'm going to toss them into some Ziploc bags. That way every time that I need to make new dough, 
I already have those bags in the freezer that I can pull out and add more dough into. Now these are the delicious toppings that I'm going to use. I'm just going to make a pepperoni and mushroom pizza. All right, I have my preheated cast iron. It's preheating at 550 degrees. I am going to take my cornmeal. And then I am going to lay out my pizza dough. Might need to move it around a bit. This is my big 12 inch skillet. All right, now a little bit of sauce. We don't like a lot of sauce. A little goes a long way for us. All right, now we'll do a bottom layer of cheese. Now we're going to do our pepperoni. Our mushrooms I didn't have any fresh mushrooms so I'm just going to try out these canned mushrooms And then more cheese. Load it up on that cheese. That's about eight ounces of cheese. And now for my garlic butter. It's not as melted as it was before. And 
And I like to sprinkle with a little bit of Italian seasoning. And then we're gonna toss this in the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. This is a lesson to never get on TikTok when you are making something for dinner because I almost burned this pizza. It was still edible, but I need to take way better care next time. Thank you so much for watching this week's What's For Dinner video. If you like this video, please like, make sure you subscribe, and if you want to be notified when I upload my next video, hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching.